The closest this world has come to nuclear conflict in recent times was between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. That, the estimates say, would have killed millions and injured others. And that's why when we're looking at global peace, non-proliferation is so crucial. That's why the British government's decision to replace the Trident delivery systems is, as Tony has said, an appalling waste of money, but it also helps provide justification for any other country wanting to invest in mass destruction. It's another example of the double standards that we operate. It's also why a new generation of nuclear power stations is not the answer for the world's future. And if Western governments consider it the fuel of the future, they can't be surprised if countries like Iran argue that they too have a right to develop such technology. And to say otherwise is again a set of double standards. We are helping a new arms race develop. The US government's insistence on developing its missile defence shield is another piece of military madness. And the decision of the British government to allow men with Hill to become part of this system was released the day before the summer recess in a ministerial statement. We have had no debate in Parliament on this issue. It's a scandal in a country that calls itself democratic, and it's marked contrast to what's happening elsewhere in Europe, because this is a European issue and a global issue. It's imperative <laughs> that we work to reduce military action in this increasingly dangerous world. My party, as you know, is committed to bringing the troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan. But we also want to see the others who are also coming from across borders to fight on that territory leave as well. I want the Turkish troops to draw back from the border with Kurdistan and for a political solution for the Kurdish people. We should also be demanding the redirection of so much of that unspent money to support Syria, Jordan, other countries in their efforts to educate and provide for the health care of hundreds of thousands of Iraqi refugees. And we have to concentrate on finding political solutions for these political issues, not military solutions. We want a lasting settlement for the Palestinian people and the Israeli peoples. We want an end to the wall which imprisons the Palestinians. We want to see an end to illegal settlements. We want to see a recognition of a democratically elected government. We want to see the restoration of tax and customs duties to find a viable solution to water rights and a solution which, amongst other things, which also need to be covered, to allow all people, men, women, of whatever faith or none, to live in freedom and dignity. We need, as Tony has said, for our governments to get really serious about the threat that really faces us all in terms of security, our changing climate. The social consequences of that will be even harder to manage in countries already in conflict. We're seeing this in the Middle East, in Africa above all. And we're already in a situation where many of the refugees of Darfur will never return home because their land cannot support them. So the meeting in Bali is crucially important. We are asking governments to redefine what is in the national interest to look beyond and to the global and common interests. Nuclear weapons are useless in the face of this threat. We need to invest our brains and our money in saving our planet, not trying to destroy it. And that also has to be part of our vision for a peaceful future for the world in years to come. Thank you.